Last time then we introduced the extended real line, um, which was a real line with two extra points, one at minus infinity and one at plus infinity. And we introduced uh, our new total order on that space and uh, I explained how to put a metric on this space so that uh, you can define notions of convergence. We haven't said very much about the convergence you get but the idea was that we would extend we're trying to extend the usual notion of convergence from real line to give you some new convergent sequences which could converge to plus or minus infinity. And that's where we got to last time. So how... Uh, so we've got the usual convergent sequences. Any old convergent sequence of real numbers that you already have before still converges. But we've got some new ones. As I mentioned at the very beginning last time, x z equals n then xn tends to infinity as n tends to infinity is one of my favorite statements because this says n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. Okay, but we should be interpreted. The second as n tends to infinity is, uh, this second as n tends to infinity is just our notation because we're talking about convergent sequences. And the first one, which is also n tends to infinity, is a statement, it is the sequence in the space converging to a point in the space because infinity is now in the non-negative gender real numbers. So it sounds like a tautology, but there is actually some content. Um, so what, how do you say what it means for uh, that a sequence tends to infinity, tends to infinity? So let xn be a sequence in um, non-negative extended real numbers Well, you could go to the metric, but if you don't want to use the metric, here's another doing it. Xn tends to infinity if and only if. Oh, okay. As n to infinity. Can anyone suggest something using some quantifiers and uh, for all positive real numbers m and things like that? Anybody want to have a go? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you have to say that for every positive number, no matter how big, um, you eventually get past that and stay past that when you're in the sequence. Um, I usually use capital M rather than capital L, but that doesn't matter. Your capital L is absolutely fine. I'll use a capital M just because I normally do. Um, or M, and I better be careful when I say greater than more because I don't allow infinity. So I'll just make it absolutely clear that for all M real numbers, but we, we can't allow infinity because that will give you something daft. If this is a natural number N big enough so that, and then the last bit is the bit that says that if you go past that point, then you've got past M. For all n in n with n greater equal to capital N, we have xn has to be greater equal to capital N. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're greater or equal or greater than there. Um, let me rewrite that. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're greater than or greater or equal. Um, if you actually go back and interpret it in terms of open balls, you may find that it's more natural to use greater than the I have a tendency to use greater or equal. It doesn't make any difference to the equivalent definition. Uh, there's a useful little sandwich theorem you can use. Well, the sandwich theorem works Squeeze rule. Works in naught infinity. 
Um, in particular, sandwich theorem, you want to find two sequences squeezing another sequence between them. And if the two sequences tend to the same thing, then the one in between will have to tend to that thing as well. Now, every sequence is squeezed from above by plus infinity. So if you have a sequence below you tending to plus infinity, the squeezing from above by plus infinity is automatic, and you must converge to plus infinity. So if xn is contained in naught infinity, and uh, yn as well, actually, and uh, xn less than equal to yn for all n, and xn tends to infinity, then yn uh, tends to infinity as n tends to infinity as well. It's got nowhere else to go. If y is greater than xn and xn is heading off to plus infinity, y is just further to the right. Bigger. Uh, you can do the same thing. If you're working in R bar, you can do the same thing and you can work with minus infinity as well. Um, similar definitions. for xn tending to minus infinity. We won't work with minus infinity very much in this module. But if you go back and look at measured integration, you'll find minus infinity is important as well, so you need to go back and do, just irritate exactly what we just did, to think about minus infinity. And now, again, now I mentioned last time that uh, if you're, that every set in the extended real line has got a supremum and an infinite, a least upper bound and the greatest lower bound in the extended real line. You didn't have to check for non-emptiness, though the empty set is silly, um, but it's still true. And you didn't have to check for bounded above or bounded below because you've already got at least one upper bound plus infinity, at least one lower bound minus infinity. So that meant everything had an infinite suit. Now, similarly, um, when you're working in the real line, you used to have a theorem, the monotone sequence theorem, which had a slightly complicated statement. Um, monotone sequences, uh, oh, I'll remind you what those are in a minute, but basically they're either sequences where either none of the term, uh, where either every term is greater or equal to the previous, or alternatively, every term is less than equal to the previous. Um, they're the two kinds of monotone sequences. They're not allowed to have some going up and some going down. Uh, Monotone sequences of the real line could do three things. They can converge to a real number, they can diverge off to plus infinity, or they can diverge off to minus infinity. In the extended real line, then that, that becomes much simpler. In the extended real line, every monotone sequence converges, whether it's to a real number, plus infinity, or minus infinity. So the statement becomes simplified. Every monotone sequence in R bar converges in R bar. Um, I'll just remind you, um, We'll use the terms non-decreasing sequences and non-increasing sequences. For non-decreasing sequence, this would be like x1 less than equal to x2 less than equal to x3 and so on. And a non-increasing sequence that's x1 greater equal to x2 greater equal to x3 greater equal to uh, you can use the terms increasing sequence and decreasing sequence but uh, for these but then you have to you may want to distinguish between strictly increasing and strictly decreasing sequences and supposedly, these are the unambiguous terms. 
though, to be honest, I think that no matter how you say it, there's always, an, there's always something to worry about. So what you have to do is you have to just see what definition I'm working with here. But these are the two kind of uh, monotone sequences. Now, you're in our bar, so, I mean, you could also think of this as monotone, uh, non-decreasing, you could also call monotone, uh, monotone increasing if you want, as long as you distinguish from the strictly increasing. Um, and non-increasing you could call a decreasing sequence, as long as you remember it doesn't mean strictly decreasing. Uh, doesn't have to. Uh, either type, well, but both types, by this monotone sequence theorem, which you check the details of, um, must converge in R-bar. Either type, though, could converge to any limit you like in R-bar, depending on what you want. And though some of them are, are tough to do. For example, a non-decreasing sequence, how can you arrange for a non-decreasing sequence to tend to minus infinity? There's actually only one way to do it. That's right. That's the only way to have a non-decreasing sequence to minus infinity is to be minus infinity forever. Because if you're non-decreasing, if you ever leave minus infinity, you can never get back again. Ne and you can't even get close. So as soon as you leave minus infinity, you've had it. So if a non-decreasing sequence is to tend to minus infinity, it's got to stay at minus infinity forever. Similarly, if a non-increasing sequence is to converge to plus infinity, it has to start at plus infinity and stay there forever. Um, that's the only way. Every other limit, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, so if you want some real number, you could have a sequence that has some infinite terms in it, and then eventually becomes a sequence of real numbers converging to that real number. That's what happens. If you want a sequence of extended real numbers to converge to a real number, you'll have finally many terms that are plus or minus infinity. And then after that, um, you'll, you have to have real numbers. And then it turns into an ordinary real sequence converging to the real number. So, um, but there are quite a lot of ways for non-decreasing sequences to tend to plus infinity, because that could be done, uh, well, I've already given you that n tends to infinity is n tends to infinity. So, uh, so our comments here then are, the only non-decreasing sequence tending to minus infinity in our bar is the constant sequence. That's the only non-decreasing one, of course, there's plenty of other ones. Um, there are plenty tending to plus infinity. So sequences of real numbers can tend to plus or minus infinity. That's any old sequence, tend to plus or minus infinity. Um, but non-decreasing sequences of real numbers can't tend to minus infinity. We saw that n tends to infinity is n tends to infinity. I'll just remind you of that. And uh, sequences in R bar which converge to real numbers are closely related to real sequences converging to real numbers. Um, well, I won't, I won't write that down. I, I've said that already. But you, you can think about that one. Okay, I think uh, 
And that finishes section 3.1. Does anyone have any questions on the extended real line so far and convergence of the extended real line? If not, I'm going to stop the recording there. I'll start a, a brand new recording for section 3.2.